Welcome back fellow island farmers. This will be an advanced guide to creature management and pasture management on your island sanctuaries. We'll be covering the importance of understanding what the mood and hunger levels of your creatures actually mean and their impact on the leavings you will get, the types of leavings you will get, how do you achieve that bonus leaving chance, as well as a very important resource for you to know exactly where and how to catch all the common creatures and all the rare creatures available in the game. Before we dive in, if you like my content on this channel, do subscribe to the channel. That will mean a lot to me. Let's get started. So first things first, this is the most important thing. Review status of animals in pasture. This is something that you want to check in on every single day when you log in like what I did just now. And you can get to this menu by talking to the creature comforter. Now, this screen is important because it essentially shows the current hunger level which is represented by food as well as the mood of your various creatures that you captured. And also whether or not you've actually picked up their leavings, which is basically the loot they will leave you at daily server reset, which is 1 a.m. Pacific daylight time. And you can do the time zone conversion yourself. What you do need to make sure is that your creatures are in a good mood and I'll talk about why later on. And to do that, you need to understand what these symbols actually mean. And the symbols are actually explained under the guide here under feeding animals as you can see on screen and you can scroll down all the way to the end of the page and to the right column it shows you the different levels of hunger that your creatures are currently facing and on the left the current mood of your creatures now all this also relates to what you'll be feeding them so if i open up my crafting log here by clicking on this crafting log on my index under feed you can see as of the moment i have three types of feed and you can see all the way at the bottom of the tooltip it actually explains what it improves the mood up to content for island sweet feed chipper for island green feed and gleeful for premium island green feed so let's say your animal starts off as hostile and you feed it the island sweet feed it will improve your creatures mood by one level from hostile to unhappy and then if you feed it island sweet feed again it goes to content now remember the two tip here says that it only improves the mood up to content so if you keep feeding your creature island sweet feed beyond content it will not progress to chipper that's when the island green feed come into play but if you read the two tip you will see that it stresses pleasantly filling versus island sweet feed that says satisfactorily filling and in reality what is happening is that island green feed actually bumps up the mood by two levels instead of the one level of sweet feet. So let's say your creature starts off as hostile. You have starved it for many days. You feed it island green feet, it will bump its mood up to content. And if you feed it island green feet again, it goes to chipper. It will not progress to gleeful because if you read the island green feet tooltip, it says it only improves the mood up to chipper. Then you need to give it premium island green feet. As you can see from the tooltip, it improves the mood up to gleeful. Also in the description, you can see that this is perfectly filling. Although in my testing, premium island green feet only seems to bump up the mood level by two levels instead of what I expected was three. But point is, this seems to give two levels of mood improvements all the way up to Gleeful. Naturally, this consumes the most resources to craft. Now, you might be wondering why the hell should I care about the mood about my creatures? Why don't I just be cheapskate and keep them at content? Well, you see the indicators for their mood as well as their hunger level, which again, as a reminder, you can see an overview when you talk to the guy and say review status. Now, these two columns, they actually impact the leavings that the creatures will give you. And you might go, wait, 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 wait a minute. I've come back on every reset and they seem to give me leavings anyway. Is there really an impact? And here is when I transit over to a resource that will be the quintessential resource that you will need to manage all the creatures on your farm. I'll drop a link to this resource in the pinned comments as well as the description. But essentially, it's hosted on lalaachievements.com and this is essentially the bible to the creatures that you need. Let's talk about the common creatures first. Let's not talk about the rare creatures and I will talk about what affects how the rare creatures spawn in a bit. But as the resource very appropriately pointed out, there are all these creatures that you see on screen here that are always available, meaning these are common creatures. For example, the lost lamb, opo, opo, etc, etc. Now, what does the alphabet beside the name mean? In the case of S, it simply means that you need a small net to capture them. And as you level up your farm, you get access to bigger nets. In the case of medium nets, as well as the large nets. So for something like the wild dodo, you cannot use a small net to capture it. You need to use a medium net. The coordinates to the right of the name is basically the X and Y coordinate on your map, where to go to find that creature to capture. And to the right, you'll see a leavings table. And remember earlier I said it's important to take care of the mood and the hunger levels of your creatures. Here's the reason why. Amongst the pair of leavings that your creature will drop you, the first material to the left, it's always a guaranteed drop. However, the second material here, this is a bonus drop. And this seems to be chance based and I can't quite put my pals on the chance but it seems to have a positive correlation with the mood as well as the hunger level of the creature so if you're all about maximizing the amount of drops you get from your creatures make sure to keep them happy and keep them well fed 
and your next question might be, wait, hang on a second. But things like fang and claw, they don't sound very useful. Now down the road, I'll cover this topic in detail in the advanced guide to the workshop for island sanctuaries. But in the workshop, you can craft various island exports. And things like the claw and fang of your creatures, they form the raw materials of your craft. I guess what I'm trying to say is all the leavings, they actually do come in handy. And that is why another very good tip is to make sure that you are relatively diversified amongst all your different creatures so you get access to different types of materials over here. Now, of course, if filling up your entire pastures with all sheeps makes you happy, you should completely do that because there's no right way or wrong way to play Island Sanctuary. You might progress slower, but as long as you're having fun, that's what's important. But I also know part of planning all these things is fun for some people. All right, so that's for all the common creatures. Let's now come to the rare creatures. And for rare creatures, there are two categories. There are rare creatures that spawn based off a timer, and the spawn of the other category of rare creatures depends on the weather in Island Sanctuary. Let's talk about time base first. Everything you see here from the Glyptodon all the way to the stack, they spawn at three hour intervals of Eorzea time, meaning server time. So if you're trying to target a certain capture, you should always track the time at which they normally spawn. Now, something I'd like to point out that is really interesting here. Let's take, for example, the Apkalu of Paradise, one of the rare creatures I actually managed to catch. No that the leavings for the Apkalu or Paradise is egg and fleas, meaning egg is guaranteed to drop first, followed by fleas as a rare chance. If you compare this to the common Apkalu, it's actually the reverse. Fleas is the one that's guaranteed to drop, and egg is the one that has a drop chance. So it's actually the direct reverse. And this is why it's important to capture those rare creatures, because they also help you in getting those diversified materials going. So time-based rare creatures is relatively easy to understand. Let's talk about weather-based rare creatures. Now, like the term suggests, these rare creatures from Black Chocobo all the way to the Twinkle Fleece only spawns under certain weather conditions on Island Sanctuary, be it whether it's clear skies, fair skies, cloudy, raining, showers, or fog. The only caveat I'll make is that the Paisa requires you to have flying before you can actually head to the place to capture it. Again, the coordinates are here, 24, 28. You cannot access this part of Island Sanctuary until you hit level 10 and you unlock flying. Also note that some of the weather-based creatures, they also spawn at very specific timing as well. So on top of having the weather condition, they also spawn at specific times. So the Paisa, Gobu, Beachcomb, Alligator, Twinkle Fleece, they need two criteria, the weather as well as the time slot in order for them to spawn. And now you might be thinking, oh man, that's just so much trouble to just keep track of all these things. Well, the website has you covered and that's why I strongly recommend this site. They have this thing called a forecast where based on the EO your time, they will convert it to your local time based on wherever you are based in this world, and they will tell you at your local time what is likely to spawn. Now, I've actually tested this out myself, and it's relatively accurate. The only caveat I'll make is that if you are slow to hit there during the specific time slot, sometimes the weather condition might change. For example, the rain stops, and I've actually seen rare animals despawn in front of me when the weather changes. So this forecast here takes into consideration both weather and Eorzea time. So use this as a guide if you're trying to target a certain rare capture. Again, I'll put the link to this website in the pinned comments and in the description below. A few more closing tips when it comes to managing your pasture and creatures. The first thing to note was what I thought was superstition initially. I was streaming and someone told me that if you approach a creature from behind and you toss a net from behind, you have a higher chance of capture. And I didn't really believe that, but I started testing that out myself and it does seem that throwing out a net from behind seems to give an advantage. Now, I might be totally wrong, but just based on my anecdotal experience, it seems to work. Also, I felt if I toss a net from the front, there's a good chance it might actually get startled and run away. Now, this is not an exact science, but it's just an observation. There's no harm trying it out, so I thought I'd let you know. Another very important tip, there is a bug sometimes with the weather spawns and the time-based spawns of rare creatures. If you want to be absolutely safe, what some of my friends have done to fix the problem is just before the spawn time, you don't want to be on your island. You can be waiting at Morabi Dry Docks. And when the server timer hits the interval that you want where your rare spawn spawns, then you go to your island. In that case, you won't encounter this weird phasing bug where the creature doesn't spawn. Although I think this is a bug and Square Enix will probably fix it, but I thought I'd let you know anyway. One last thing to note, as you expand your pasture and you level up your island sanctuary, you will get to also expand the slots on your pasture. I currently have it at rank two, so I have 10 slots. But if you max out your island sanctuary and go up to level 10, you can have up to 15 creatures and you can essentially build a supply chain of materials. And just to kind of drive home what I said earlier, what I'm showing you on screen right now is essentially the raw materials tab that's required to craft certain things. 
from your workshop. As you can see, things like the fang is actually a raw material and is needed in crafting something like earrings. Now, again, I wouldn't go into the very complicated details about like looking at your demand and supply chain and predicting which one is of the highest value to craft. I'll cover this down the road in my workshop advanced guide for Island Sanctuary. I'm only bringing this up to explain to you the importance of pasture management. And folks, that basically sums up my Island Sanctuary advanced guide for creatures and pasture management. This is one of many advanced guides I'll cover for Island Sanctuaries and I'll cover all all facets of it in due course. If you found this video helpful, do subscribe to my channel, that will mean a lot to me. There'll be more advanced guides being posted to this channel in due course. I stream from time to time on Twitch, feel free to swing by to say hello. Last but not least, I thank you to my Patreon subscribers for keeping the channels alive. Have a great day folks, I'll see you soon.